What's going on YouTube? My name is Javier. You're watching Off-Road Icon and today we're gonna be talking about my loadout that I take with me every time I go off-roading. So everybody should have something with them. You know, I keep a first aid kit in my vehicle and I don't like keeping everything in my vehicle because I don't have racks. I don't have a way to lock it down. I travel every week and I'm at the airport. So I really don't want to keep that stuff in there. So it's important for me to keep all of my stuff in one container that I plan on taking out one cooler that I plan on taking out and a way that I can just grab my stuff and go. So everyone's a little different. I want to show you guys how I come about this and how I attack this issue. Cause the worst thing could be is you spend hours trying to gather all your things together, trying to pack it all up. And then by the time you go to leave, you're tired. You know, what you want is a very quick, effective way to just grab what you need within 15 minutes, be on the go. So I wanna show you just a little peace of mind. This is in regards to my recovery gear, and that way you can understand how I pack it, what I have, what I plan on buying in the future, you know, kind of going from there. Because at the end of the day, it's what fits your needs, your vehicle. I drive a Ram 2500, I have a lot of truck bed. You know, it's easy for me to grab chairs, throw them in the back, grab it easy up, throw it in the back, where some people don't have that option. So really, this doesn't mean this is what you have to get. This is just an idea. Maybe your scenario fits mine. Maybe you're just starting out. And I also wanna show you kind of what I got because I'm really just starting out. I don't have a lot of things. So I've kind of just slowly brought stuff in as I've needed it, as I've gone out and realized it'd be nice to have this. So let's dive on in. Let me bring you a little closer and we'll check out my setup for every time I go off-roading. All right guys, so as you can see here, I got my Plano box. Um, you know, you're facing me right now on the back side from where you were facing earlier, just to give you a little perspective. So I'm facing my workbench as you were facing me. Um, you know, s later on, I'll try to get a better setup, but you know, as being the same fact that I'm just starting off, it's gonna take me a little while. So, so this is my plain old box. Um, I do have two of these. I actually use one of these for my other business um, and which is kind of what started me to get this. So what I liked about it was that it was double clasped it was a compact size. It has a nice secure locking mechanism on it. And in my case, this is pretty heavy. I would bet it's about hmm, 75 pounds or so. Um, as you can see from the side, uh, this is your lock setup. I do not like the tie down method. You're supposed to be able to tie down from here. I don't know how to do it. If you guys know how to do it, send me something in the comments because strapping this down is kind of a pain in the butt to be honest. But the locking mechanism is great. You just flip it up, it's got a nice secure fit. Smack it down, push it down. You can see it's pretty tight. You do have handle grass right here. So you can pick it up from there. It's very plain when you get it. Um, ironic with the name. The branding's just right here. Um, this side, which is the back side, I guess you can call it dirty because of course I throw it in my bed. But it looks just the same all the way around. So as I spin it around, you can see that there's no branding on it. And realistically, that's kind of nice. I mean, you get some stickers, but the stickers do come off really easy um, compared to some other stuff, right? They don't get stuck on there where you're putting heat to them. So that's pretty great. So opening this up, if you flip it over, you can see that it's just got a nice groove that fits right in there. I do find if you stuff it a little bit too much, you just gotta push the walls in. Um, just a hair and it'll fall right in that groove it's not water submersible but it's definitely rain repellent i've had plenty of stuff in there there's no holes on the side and having this overlip factor will make it so that you can pretty much have buckets thrown on it of rain it's not going to get wet on the inside the fact is though you can't throw it in water and expect it to keep the water out so keep that in mind if you're uh going scuba diving with your truck or vehicle. That's probably not the case for you. But if you're like me and just throwing it in the back and trying to keep it dry, and now that I got that tonneau cover, it stays really dry. So let's go ahead and open it up, move this out of the way. Um, on the bottom, you do see a honeycomb pattern. So there's some rigidity to it. Um, my larger one, I can stand on it, no problem. In fact, people stand on it every time. So I have no problem with setting things on here. I don't think it's gonna break. I've stood on this one myself. And realistically, minus a couple little scuff marks, it's perfectly fine, looks brand new on the inside. So diving in, 
you're gonna see I'm a little bit of a brand loyal type of person so if I buy something that I like and I feel that their product is something that I can back or I like its functionality its performance then I'm gonna keep purchasing that product I'm also the type who would rather support a smaller business than a large corporation um, in the off-road community it's kind of important to me rather than going to you know Home Depot or AutoZone and buying straps you know I buy my straps from Rhino USA um, they're great they last they work better they look better um, you know some people get upset because they're not made in the USA they say they're designed in the USA uh, I'm pretty sure they're made in China but the company is based out of the USA it's a smaller company and the product is really good so don't you know if you're looking for a budget or I don't want to say budget friendly but a better cost efficient you know product um, it's definitely more reasonable than pretty much anything I've seen on the market at the quality level it's at guys so keep that in mind so what's in here is my tie down straps and most of them are unopened so this is a brand spanking new one as you see it's still got the little plastic thing on here um, it comes with a velcro holder to hold it all together this is one that I use all the time so I bought a four pack and I bought it because I pretty much go through these a lot sometimes they get lost they get forgotten and I want a better quality setup so you get this little rhino lined piece of uh, velcro double sided that allows you to secure every single one of these what I liked about their setup was they have this little locking clasp on there and between that and the fact that their webbing doesn't feel cheap you know they brought they brand all their stuff rhino usa which is great but their webbing feels really strong and it's something that compared to the ones that you buy at home depot unless you're buying the extremely expensive ones i found these to be great quality they hold up fine they're not so stiff that you can't move them around which is another problem that you run into they definitely are pliable and they're you know they get around everything you need to I'm sure folding them the other way is a little bit better but this happens to be just enough where it seems that I've been able to go like this go like this and just hit it and with that half inch of overlap that's secure enough guys so this little setup comes with this bag um, the bag is great uh, is it the best quality bag uh, I mean it's fine it's a little canvas bag for what I use it for being inside this box all the time it's great I mean it works perfect um, if I was throwing this in the back of my vehicle by itself um, I would probably be worried that eventually you're gonna tear through it but that's not what this is for guys that's why I have an enclosure to keep all of my stuff in here so Rhino USA I encourage you to check them out you get a sticker with everything you buy it's kind of a little thing they talk about on their little web page check them out on uh, YouTube check them out on Instagram um, going up next I got a grit rapid tire deflator I don't think there is much of a price difference between the grit and the ARB um, speaking of stickers there's a rhino sticker uh, here's the grit sticker that came with this grit setup I just keep them in there um, I encourage you you should be deflating your tires I'm not gonna tell you what to deflate to everybody's different but get yourself one of these maybe get yourself two of these um, I looked using your finger works takes forever um, you can grab a valve stem remover if you want to deal with trying to put it back on and this is a valve stem remover but at least it secures itself to the stem itself so you could at least you know undo it pull it back and if you've never used one of these basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up to your tire take the cap off pull this lever back make sure that this guy you see how this moves here that's pushed in towards which is closed and you're gonna push up against your valve stem threads and spin it on once it stops spinning you're gonna push this guy in towards it keeping this forward still and spin it counterclockwise to loosen up the valve stem give it about I don't know five six turns pull it back pull this back and you're gonna quickly just start shooting air out of this valve you can every time you want to check to see where you're at push it forward it'll go ahead and tell you what the PSI pressure is on the gauge pull it back to pull more push it forward again to stop it once you're ready to go ahead and put it back in 
push this forward, spin it clockwise till it's tight. You don't need to be a gorilla, guys. You don't want to thread, mess up your threads. And then go ahead and unscrew the unit from this portion here. So these are two separate, right? This back piece is for your valve stem. This is for threading onto the valve itself. So these are wonderful, guys. It comes with this little case. You gotta have them. Um, I'll try to link it in the description below. This is a valve stem, just the valve stem remover. Um, you can go ahead and replace them. I think it's even the threader if you cross thread it in there. A couple extra valve stems, a couple extra caps, both in chrome and in plastic. Comes with the case. Great setup. Um, the worst thing that happens with it is just this sticks out. And usually when I find it, it's like this. It's not that big of a deal, especially for what it does. It saves you a tremendous amount of time. I could probably deflate my tires within a couple minutes, if maybe less than a couple minutes each. But the bigger part of it is I don't have to sit there with my finger jammed in or a rock or whatever credit card and wait. Um, I could just do it, check something really quick, maybe remove the next valve stem, come back over, double check it and see how it looks. So definitely recommend these guys. All right. Uh, I bought this for my high lift jack. I do have a five for a 60 inch high lift jack. Um, I don't take it very much right now because when I have it in my vehicle, it kind of moves around. I don't do treacherous things. It was more for me to have a come along or if I really, really had to change a tire, I have it. I bought the base, comes with a little scraper. Um, I just bought the whole kit, guys. I wanted something that I knew that you know, I go to the dunes, I need to make sure I can put a platform down because or else it's just gonna drive itself in. This base fits in here pretty good. I've never tried it out, but being from the fact that it's from High Lift, I imagine the quality of the parts are pretty good. It should fit perfect, which is why I bought it from High Lift and not anybody else. And I understood the concept. I mean, I've jacked up my vehicles or my trailer in the dunes or in soft dirt before, and you just, you know, it just goes right into the ground. So making a nice flat surface that gives you more area, more surface area to put pressure down onto is imperative, guys. If you're gonna have a high lift jack, you're gonna want something that you can jack from. Whether it be these, whether it be leveling blocks, whether it be a piece of wood, something. So keep that in mind when you're doing your purchase. All right, right underneath that is a tire repair kit. Uh, you can buy this probably exact same setup from any Amazon website. Uh, again, brand loyalty it's definitely rebanded it's got a pretty cheap sticker on there if i must admit um it's not anything special but at the end of the day you need them pliers are pretty cheap that are in there razor blades just fine you know you got some valve stem stuff again um, at, you know is it the best kit probably not i'm sure there's better kits but Will it do what I need it to do? Yes, thankfully I've never had to use it. I know how they function, I've used them before. You know, here's your lubricant that it comes with to prove I've never used it. If I can get it all the way off. Still unopened. Again, I would prefer no stickers, to be honest, as far as branding goes. Um, I would be fine with them just having Rhino USA right here, not putting a sticker on here that's gonna give you this like coming off effect. Um, and then not giving you this sticker here, which is very cheaply put on. Um, the case is great. It works fine, roller molded case. Their products inside of it is fine. Um, some people like this style. Some There's another style that some people use. It's more like a uh, trigger, not trigger, handle grip style, which is instead of being a T-handle, it looks more like a pistol grip style. Um, I don't really care. For me, it was something that, hey, you need to have something. You can't go around not having something to repair your tires because if you're gonna get stuck because you have a flat, there's a big problem. You need to get to the road, something that can get you at least enough to put some air in it and get you to AAA. So I bought this for the fact that I need to carry it myself. Um, also friends, I keep the instructions of how to do it in there. Like I said, I know how to do it, but I'm not gonna show you how to do it because I don't have holes in my tires. Um, again, Valve stem repair kit, little valve uh, extender. Oh, I don't even know what those honestly are. They look like uh, valve air release, but I'll have to double check that one. Um, the rest of this valve caps, valve stems, you know, here's the patch 
uh, the physical patch uh, portions. There's tons of them in there. Looks like there's five or six in here. Uh, the replacement needle. If you bend this needle is in here, which is perfectly fine there. Um, basically, you're gonna go ahead and weave that in there, push it in, pull it out, cut it, and go down. That's why you have these. And then if you want to check tile pressure, I have a tile pressure, a different one. That's a cheapy one. I'm sure it's not very well calibrated. So, it don't work. So, closing it up, close it up just fine. Like I said, the case is fine. I just, the branding to me is a little chintzy. But again, this is a smaller company. I said, hey, it's like three, four bucks more than what it is on Amazon. I know who this is going to, so I supported them. Let's see what else we got in here. So in here is, uh, well, since we're talking about patching tires, then we come up with the next part again. You can get this exact same one from Astro Pneumatic um, and a couple of different companies. So it's just a tire inflator. I bought this with the understanding that I will use it one day. It sits in here and has never been used. Um, it comes with thread lock on the threads. It comes with a nice braided steel cable. You know, it's up to 100 PSI. Again, you can get the exact same one from Amazon, from Astro Pneumatic, a couple companies. Here's a release. The reason it's never been used is because of the uh, compressor that I purchased does not accept these. The compressor I purchased uses a Japanese style. One day when I go to dual area RBs, it will work. Same type of canvas bag, guys. Again, best canvas bag in the world? No, I mean, it's probably like a plasticky canvas, um, but sitting in here, it works great. So depending on your setup, that might change what you need. This is for the high lift. This is what you would use to pull up on your tires. You can go ahead and grab it and jack straight up. You can just hook your tires up. You're not supposed to just put your tires directly to, or put the frame up. You're supposed to jack up your tires, put something underneath it, right guys? So if you never use these, search the web. I'm sure you can see how to put them on. But this one as well, this is from LiftMate from High Lift, right? It's called the LiftMate from High Lift. So 5,000 pound capacity. I think that could pick up the core one tire of my truck, no problem. All right, next one. Um, I have used these before, not very often. This is a 30 foot, I wanna say 30,000 pound rated. Let's see if I could find the sticker. As it, you see, it comes with Velcro as well. Again, the Velcro doesn't reach all the way around, but it does reach and does attach itself to the webbing itself. So it looks like we got it right here. Hopefully I can close this back up without making too much of a mess. So, maximum load weights, 10,663 pounds, working load limit. The max braking strength is 31,000 pounds. So, you need to make sure that when you purchase any type of recovery rope, two things matter. One, this has a little bit of give in it. It's not a bubble grip or bubble rope or, a, um, you know, those elastic ropes that stretch and um, pull back. I will be buying one of those next. Um, kinetic ropes that's the word we're looking for guys a kinetic rope is definitely on my list um, but it does have some give and that's important because you don't want it to snap and just shoot at you guys so keep that in mind when you're buying um, you know putting this on here is probably not the best idea because it's pulling on the threads but it does work I would prefer to be able to get it tight enough where I could put it the other way where I'm just attaching to itself and it's got the felt side on this side um, maybe I have it spooled wrong. I am almost positive when I got it, it worked as far as being tight or maybe I'm just not tightening it up enough. So yeah, it's pretty close. So in that case, I'd prefer this to be a little bit longer. I don't have all day to put it back the way it goes every single time, especially if you took it apart and didn't pay attention. So that's a little complaint. Is it the worst thing? No, I can go buy some one inch or whatever this is, Velcro, wrap it myself. Um, so it's not horrible, but you need a recovery rope, guys. You can't depend on someone else to have it. And when you get a recovery rope, look at the weight of your vehicle. My truck's almost 10,000 pounds, if not 10,000 pounds. So working load, if you were to pull my truck, we're right at that level. Um, max load, 30,000 pounds, you know, obviously it can handle that. So I got a big truck. 
I can pull, it's a diesel, I can definitely pull on some bigger vehicles. So I wanted to make sure I had a bigger rope to cover that. Um, tree saver. Um, it's not same thing set up as far as this company, same ratings. Again, I wouldn't get another unit that has a lower rating because that's pointless. So you can wrap this around a tree, gives you, or you can turn two points into one. So that's what I've done with it, where I've hooked up to the front of someone's unit, got their two uh, points of hookup, and then wrapped this to the center point off of the loop, and then pulled them from the center point of my hitch with a hitch adapter, uh, which you should have seen in my last video, or one of my last videos where we did the walk around. So if you don't, have a hitch adapter i suggest getting a hitch adapter because you do not want to pull from a hitch ball uh, those things are not designed to get pulled on that way you put a lot of stress in a spot that's not designed to have and there are videos out there and people have had it happen where you snap the hitch right off so keep in mind you want to actually hook from recovery points not the factory strap down points not a to toe ball you know you can buy hitch adapters that come with a d-ring adapter like this one and allow you to give a single point of tugging force and they'll be rated at a much higher, higher rate. So look into that guys, they're not really expensive. My hitch adapter is from Rhino, Recover or Rhino Gear, Rhino USA, I'm sorry, from Rhino USA and I, you know, I love it. I leave it on my truck all the time. I have an aluminum drop hitch that's inside my truck at all times. So between the two, I'm covered. I just leave a hitch lock on it. Uh, these shackles came with my adapters that I swapped out when I got rid of my Mopar, um, my Mopar recovery points. If you ever seen the Mopar ones, they look like the Mopar symbol. In fact, give me one second. So this is the Mopar recovery points that come on a Ram 2500. And this little guy makes it really difficult to do anything. Um, put, trying to hook these guys in here. It just doesn't quite work. You can't hook in there. If I was hooking into it like this and tugging, it's not horrible. I just don't trust it. I don't want something grabbing from here with this as its holding point to pull up. Um, I, you know, enough force and you'll bend it. Uh, yeah, I'm sure these are super strong, but at the end of the day, it's not a system I trust. So my new setup allowed, it has this base, it's got a post that comes out where the shackle can go right in and my shackles are sitting, hanging out. So that I can remove the shackle, put this in here, go around, close it up and pull. So I trust that a lot more than this. So I got rid of them. Um, if you're interested in getting them, uh, I'll get them to you cheap, right? Just cover some shipping and handling, maybe 20 bucks for the both of them. If you don't have them on your vehicle, it's better than nothing. Um, I don't believe I have the hardware because it's on my vehicle. I use the same hardware because I like that hardware better. But if you wanna go buy some grade eight bolts, you probably be fine. All right, coming on over guys. Also, Rhino USA, I don't plan on very, using this very much. It's just a quick folding shovel, right? Uh, again, works works for what it is. is. Are you gonna dig yourself a freaking nice big old hole? Probably not, but can it get you out of what you need to? It looks like it, sure looks like it to me. Um, you know, you can loosen it up, you can flip it and make it like a T, tighten it back up. And if you've never seen the video, that's how you do it, guys. And then you got a little pick, you can drive in a pick. Uh, I don't know how much that saw is really doing, plus I couldn't imagine trying to saw that way. But at the end of the day, once you've tightened it up, this becomes rigid. If I loosen it up, you can see that now I got play in here. So the tightening is important. Don't over tighten it, you wanna make sure it's at least hand tight. And then to put it away, Fold it, fold it, and fold it. It's quick, it's easy. The bag's cool. I think this bag's probably a little better than the other bags. I would prefer to have this material on the other ones, but it is still tearing and all it does is sitting here. So, uh, you know, again, that's probably part of what you're getting. You're not getting a 500 Kedora or whatever bag. You're getting a regular polyester, nylon, whatever type of bag. So, but the product is fine. If I just need to dig a little bit of dirt out of my way or some sand out of my way so I can put something underneath my tire, there you go. 
Uh, again, small, something that can move around. All right, guys, last part in here, I believe, yeah, except for the high lift jack constructions, is the Smitty built air compressor. Um, this is the 2781. Um, so let's see, do I love the air compressor? No. Uh, does the air compressor work and do what I need to do? Yes. Uh, uses the, I believe these are Japanese style fittings. So those who know, probably know more than I do. From my understanding, it's pushing out air the whole time. It doesn't restrict this because it doesn't have a pressure overload sensor. So basically you're on offing it in order to make sure that you've stopped pushing pressure um, towards, or it doesn't build any pressure into the system. Because like I said, it doesn't have a pressure relief valve or, um, I mean, it has one to pull line pressure off but it doesn't have a thermal one or an overload one where it gets too much pressure and it shuts it off so there's a problem in here i keep a pair of mechanics gloves anyone who's used a compressor knows one thing they make a lot a lot of heat so mind you that with all that heat the moment you go to grab this after you filled up your tires in my case i have 35s they're around 60 psi to 65 psi filled I bring them down to about 30. That's 30 PSI to fill. So everyone's gonna make funny if you got a big truck because they're over there filling their 35s and their forerunner, you know, to 30 foot pounds. And they've only dropped them down 15 pounds. So they're only filling up 15 pounds. When you're filling up to another 30 pounds, it takes a while. It probably though only takes me about 15 minutes to do my whole truck. So mind you, 15 minutes to do the truck, uh, you know 30 psi per tire not horrible this is a majority of the weight guys here's your setup clamps onto the batteries um, again it gets super hot super hot this gets hot this gets hot the fittings get hot when you go to take them apart they get hot and they are honestly just miserable this is the starting end on it let me put it back in here Excuse me guys, I'm a little congested due to allergies here in California. I came down to Southern California guys and it's just snowing or raining away. <laughs> so it's definitely throwing my allergies for a loop. So here is the hose that comes attached to the end. Originally I thought I could change it, but when I found out that you didn't have any overload protection, I couldn't change it. So the way it works, you just take it just like a coupling, a coupler, put it in and then it just pushes air through the other side, the coil hose, which I hate got the same thing so there's that set up if you were to blow air see it's actually only goes one way right so I can blow air out can't get air this way so if you were to have which is what I'm getting at air is being shot from this unit going this way if you plug this it's gonna build pressure in here and that's where it's not gonna turn off where where you normally have an in or um, your regulator slash you know air fill up hose this is pushing air the whole time it's giving you a gauge for a quick amount of pressure when you turn it off but it doesn't give you any decent accurate reading while it's on it's probably about 10 psi off when it's on to be honest so if you were to chop the fittings off put on the other style uh you know tire inflator that i have you would just destroy the compressor. So keep that in mind. It works fine for what it is. I do plan on buying a twin air or twin unit, uh, ARB unit. Uh, they are kind of expensive though, considering this is only 120 bucks and its output is pretty high. Um, like I said, it's pretty fast. It's probably still a hundred and something dollars cheaper, $110 cheaper, $120 cheaper than the Vi Air one. Um, and it's probably even way cheaper than the continuous duty one. So keeping that in mind, again, budget conscientious, I, I probably air down every two weeks and give or take, and it works fine. And as you can see, the bag, crap, the bag sucks. So maybe that's the moral of this story. Um, good products as far as overall performance, uh, crappy bags because they didn't cost that much so keep that in mind guys hence my storage case I'm gonna quickly put this all back together so you can kind of see how it loads out 
then you can see how much space I end up with and see if it's something that you would have to do. Boom, boom. That fit perfect. This guy back on top. And I still got a little bit of space. You see the little bow? Ooh, forgot one thing. Right in here. Got me a nice flat surface. Perfect. And, well, you guys are gonna let me forget my shovel. And what I like to do is have the things I have to get immediately more accessible. I know I need these straps because I plan on strapping this down, so I'm gonna take one out of there. I'm gonna air down before I have to air up, and then my air up unit's right there. So it's pretty quick and easy. Grab the lid, push, lock, and done. So let's turn you guys back around, quick little chat, and let you go. All right, guys. So that's my quick loadout. Um, I guess I can grab the high lift jack real quick. Also extremely heavy. Hopefully it fits mostly in frame. Really dirty, never been used. So as far as that goes, guys, the reality is don't go buying a whole bunch of stuff just because you wanna be that guy. I don't have recovery boards, even though I plan on getting some, but I've never actually needed them. When I go to the dunes, I stay in the hard pack. I don't go in the dunes, I just take my quads for the dunes. When I go, you know, I don't go into a lot of mud. I understand the limitations of my vehicle. I understand the limitations of myself as a driver. Even though I try to push those limitations, I also understand what type of recovery systems I have currently with me that can I push those limitations and get myself out of them. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, guys, don't do it. That's the end of the story. At the end of the day, no matter the recovery gear, it's you who has to make the decision on whether or not trying to do a recovery is something that you can or can't do. And honestly, I suggest you reaching out to your friends, looking through YouTube. Um, if you go to off-road uh, expos and stuff like that, they have some classes to teach you. Reach out and learn. That's the best thing you can do. Educate yourself, understand what you need and get that first. Air compressor, given you're going to air down so you need some way to air up whether it's an air compressor whether it's air tanks i would love to go to air tanks but an air compressor was a hundred and something dollars so keep that in mind uh a way to deflate yes you can use a rock but time is precious you want to be out there during the best daylight and if you're spending 30 minutes deflating your tires and your finger hurts or whatever you know it might bother you so what's 30 bucks for a deflator you know Good tires, that's probably more important than getting any of this first off, right? So make sure you have off-road tires, make sure that you have an understanding of the weather, make sure that you have told somebody where you're going, make sure that you check in with people if you can, or if you plan on being without service, tell somebody so they know where you're at and then they understand when you're gonna check in and then check in. All that stuff starts before you ever touch a piece of recovery gear. I've never used any of my recovery stuff for myself, thankfully, today, except for air compressor to air up my tires to get back on the freeway. But I have helped other people. If you catch a video from Dirt Nation, you see I pulled out a Lexus GX, um, their center differential, you know, went to crap. So unfortunately for them, they had to cut their day short. Thankfully, we were in a place where we had recovery gear. I think I used their strap in that case and we were to get them out. Um, to Landers Rock, I, I passed a set of people that were in an F-150, uh, actually, sorry, it's a Ford Ranger, and their tires were bald, and they're going through this soft sand, and they're just stuck, right? So I pulled them all the way to hard pack, but again, they were going through an area that they shouldn't have been going through with tires they shouldn't have been you know, going through with. If they would have got proper tires, they probably never got stuck. So keep all that stuff in mind. We all like to go out and have fun, but at the end of the day, you gotta be safe. So my message is always get out and explore, but be safe is number one, guys. Hope you liked the video. If you liked that video, smash that like button, subscribe, consider hitting that bell notification to get notified every time I put out a new video. Again, I'm gonna try to put out videos every week, guys. I'm trying to take a trip this weekend. Hopefully I'll have that out by next weekend. And again, comment below if you have any questions on the gear. Links will be in the description below. And at the end of the day, 
I hoped you have a great one. Get out there, explore. Peace.